Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Alex Minnie and I will today be presenting uh, Datashed and Config Manager and uh, how we use Config Manager in relation to your front end Datashed database uh, and in relation to your back end SQL database. Uh, the Config Manager is a little software that uh, Maxwell's has developed and it's what is used to interact between the SQL database and your um, data shed front end. So if we just go into our start menu and go into Config Manager. Bring it up. <clears throat> okay, so if you just type in the password, which you should have in your uh, data shed manuals. Okay, so in today's instance, I've only got one user, which is myself, a mini. Uh, that is my uh, Windows logon, so that's how that name is derived. Uh, you can see on the right hand side I've got a couple of things. I've got the user groups, the modules, and underneath modules I've got the projects that have been assigned. So if you go to user group, you can see I'm an system administrator. If I edit that, you can see there are other user groups. So in this instance, exploration users and grade control are the main other two that you might have. So for example, you've got a uh, production line and or surrounding that you've got brownfields and greenfields exploration drilling and you've got exploration geologists that you don't want to have access to your face sampling or your grey control drill modules and vice versa if you've got production geologists that you don't want to have access to your exploration side of things you can categorize different users into different user groups based on their role. In this instance, I'm a system administrator, so I have pretty much whole access to all the modules, but if you go to the user group here, you can determine what users which are in a user group and what modules they can see as a user group. So for example, exploration users can only see this uh, list of particular modules, whereas a grade control user can see different ones. They can see the face management, for example, and grade control. Um, if you go into the user modules, you can edit which ones are in that list, and which ones you want to, to have different users um, available to them. Uh, and that's how you can determine sort of filtering by your staff members. So if I go back to my users and a many, so that's how we talk about um, user administration and modules. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, modules essentially are what you see in Datashed and they sort of categorise or group your different tables, views and libraries based on <clears throat> a module name. If you wanted to, you can create a new module. So if we go into our modules over here, and if we go new user module, I'm going to call one called favorites. Okay. And if I edit my um, sorted, obviously it's my favorites, so I want it to go to the top. So I can put the bottom there on my favorites and move it up. So now under my modules, the favorites is at the top. As you can see on the right hand side at the moment, I have no tables or extensions assigned to that particular module. So if I right click and edit, it's showing you all of the uh, tables that are available. So I'm just going to add a couple here. Edit all, which means that when you see the table in data shed, it's editable. So you can insert, update, edit data. And I'm just going to sort. Okay, so now you can see these are the tables that are assigned to my new module. If I go back to my user, so a mini under my user modules, if I edit that, you can see now there's a new module available on the left hand side. If I click add, that new favorites module has been added to all of the other modules that I have available. There it is. And then the first other thing to talk about uh, under a user, under an individual user, under modules, you have projects. So if you right click edit, these are all the projects that are available in our database. So your drill data or your sampling data, point, point sample data gets categorized into different sort of um, project areas, either spatially or demarcated some other way. It's just clustering of your data by project and then under each project, you can have multiple data sets. So in this instance, uh, I'm now making all projects available. However, again, on an individual user basis or um, in mass, you could filter out which projects um, are seen. So in this instance, I'm just going to take out Australasia and 
my test and new projects and I'm going to remove mining. So all that I can see is the demo project and underneath that exploration and portable XRF. Okay, so if I close that now, so you can see that these projects have been collapsed and um, and mining has been collapsed as well. So all that's available is exploration and all these data sets and portable XRF and the data sets underneath them. Uh, the other thing to look at is at a user level, if you right click the user and look at the properties, you can see that my security level is a system administrator. So you can change uh, individuals user levels here to be system admin, user plus or user. A system administrator pretty much has whole privileges over the database. They can insert, update, delete. Whereas a user, which is the lowest level, can only view data. A user plus uh, can insert data and view data, but they cannot delete data. So at the moment, I'm a system administrator, so I have full privileges. Okay, so if I had a new starter come to site and I wanted to insert them into Config Manager so they had access to data shed, I would find an existing user and copy. And so I've got a new starter called Joe Blogs. Okay, I'm just copying a many. So now Joe Blogs has the same um, privileges, system administrator, access to the same modules and projects that a many has assigned. I now actually want to edit and I want Joe Blogs to have access to all projects. And as a matter of fact, I want a many to also. If I had multiple users, there'd be a list here and you could pick and choose which users you want to apply this to. So you go, okay, yes. So now what I've done is I've given Joe Blogs access to all of the projects. You can see they've all been expanded again, not collapsed, the new project and the test project and the mining. And a many also has the same privileges. So projects have all been expanded, uh, inclusive of the mining. Okay, so if we go now into the registration manager. In the registration manager, this is where if you in SQL have created a new view or an additional library or a table or a lookup, and you wanna access that um, SQL object in data shed, you have to register it by the config manager. So if we go into table, and let's just find an existing one. I'm going to remove events. Uh, I don't recommend that you uh, delete tables uh, unless you're very confident with what you're doing. Um, unregistering tables and then trying them again and registering them can be quite difficult. So uh, this is just as an exercise, please remember. You, it's not often that you would delete a table. All right, so in this instance, I'm going to add a new table and it's going to be called DH events. As you can see, the display name is matching the table name. The object class will be downhole and the table view will be TBL DH events. To be classified as a downhole, uh, a table or review has to have data set and whole ID present in the view. In this one, DH events, you can see data set and whole ID is present, which is what I'm going to sort by. Um, the other categories are points. So for a point, table to be appointed has to have site ID um, and data set present. And every other sort of table of view can be classified as a user library. But in this instance, we're going to be classified as a downhole. Okay, so I'm creating this downhole events. Okay, so you can see now that it's been created on the left hand side. The next step is to register the DH events. So I'm going to register it across to the right. So you can see there it is in my list of tables. And then the final step is to assign that newly uh, created and registered table to a module. So I want to go back to my user modules and back to my favorites and under my table, I'll edit. There's the DH events. I'm going to add it to my module. So edit it so it's editable and sort. With Config Manager, a library or a view or a table can only be registered to one module at a time. You can't replicate the same table in different modules because that will cause conflicts uh, if you open the same object under multiple uh, modules. So if you want to have a table registered to your newly created module and it's assigned to another module, you have to remove it first and then reassign it to another module. Okay, so you can see DH events is now in that, um, in that module. Okay, so if I go back to my registration manager and the next one is to look at its extensions. So I'm just going to remove all my extensions. Okay, so the standard extensions, there's about 250 of them uh, approximately. 
but I only want to look at a couple of extensions as part of my um, new module. As I said earlier, unregistering tables and, and libraries and views is quite difficult and I don't suggest you do that. Unregistering and registering uh, extensions is a lot easier. You can do that in mass, but for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to just pick the first four and I'm going to register them. Same process as before with the tables. So I've registered my extensions on the right hand side. So now if I close that down, go back to my module, back to my favourites. You can see I've got these tables from previously. Now I want to register my extensions. So I right click my extensions, edit, and I want to add all of them, close. So now you can see I've got four extensions registered to my new favourites module. Back to the registration manager. The last thing I want to talk about in here is the projects. Again, we talked about existing projects and assigning uh, permissions for individual users or user groups to see existing projects and data sets. But in the registration manager under the uh, projects button is where you can create a new project and or data set. So clicking on the project level, if I go add, I'll just call it uh, just project two. Okay, and then you can see under the projects, I've got a new one called test project two. If I go add again, you can see that the default now is data set. If you wanted to, you could again, create a new project, but it's defaulted to data set because it's a hierarchy and it knows that if you create a new project uh, and you're clicking new, it will hierarchically uh, use the relationship to create a new data set within your newly created project. So under our new data set, we'll call it uh, data set test two. Obviously, you call it something more appropriate than uh, what I'm calling things here. So you can see now in our test project two, we have data set test two as available under that project. You can have a one to many relationship. So you can create a project with many data sets underneath that as part of your clustering. You can see, for example, mining has got four data sets already assigned to it. But in this instance, I'm just going to create one project with one data set. So I'm going to close that down now. And now if you just quickly go back to your users, because it's a newly created project, we have to assign it. So if we go back to our project and edit, you can see that test projects there, but it's not been highlighted as available. So I'm just going to make all projects available and I'll assign that to everybody. In this case, just Joe blogs. So you can see now I have test project two available and data set test two uh, under that project is also available. So now if I go into data shed, Establish my ODBC connection to my testing database. Whilst that's loading up, I'll just show you one other thing. If we go back to our modules, and if you click on any, an individual module, and if you right click and look at the properties, I've got a thing here saying expanded false. What that means is when you open Data Shed at the front screen, it, the module will, will be collapsed. And until such time as you say expanded true, uh, at which point the module and all the associated tables within that module will then open. So I'll show you what I mean uh, when data shed opens up, but at the moment I'll just have expanded equals false. It's just loading up the uni queries now. So let's just go to the views, it's getting there now. Okay, 
so you can see on the right hand the left hand side here i've got uh, some modules that have been collapsed and uh, if you go back to the registration manager for example drilling management if you properties you can see that expanded equals true and that's why uh, on the left hand side it's open whereas all these other ones uh, expanded equals false and that's why they're collapsed and obviously grain control is another one and favorites also uh, is open. So there's our new module favourites and you can see there are the new uh, tables that we've assigned to that particular module. Also, uh, I clicked four extensions and you can see those four extensions that are there available under the favourites module. If we go to the data set manager, you can see that we've created the test project two and the test data set two. Uh, they are now available to be reviewed and you can sort of select these now and start loading data to your newly created data set under your new project. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to create a module, but you have things that you quite like uh, that are your favorites that you use quite often, you can create you know, things in your shortcut bar on the left-hand side here. So for example, under drilling management, if I wanted to see collars uh, quite frequently, I would just click and drag and hold and now I've created a shortcut to find collars all the time. Okay, so that is pretty much Config Manager in a nutshell. Yes. Now the future of Config Manager is um, we are developing uh, Config Manager to be used by our cloud-based environment, which is WebShed. So if I just log on to WebShed as administrator and find uh, a user, so in this instance, I've assigned permissions to my test user to a particular database. But I can uh, there's functionality that you can use in here uh, that we can uh, that will be sort of um, used instead of Config Manager. So, uh, so for example, if I uh, grant permission to this particular user to this database, okay. Okay, so now that user has access to the database, however, they haven't got any data set selected. So if I edit the projects available, so in this instance, there's exploration and mining. So I'm gonna select all of those projects. And as you can see, the data sets populates with uh, what data sets are available from those projects I've just selected. Uh, if you go to modules, again, no user group has been defined. If I select all of the user groups or Edit, sorry, I'll just take away the expiration of grade control and only make them a system administrator. It just shows you what modules they have assigned based on privileges as a system administrator user group. Uh, the beauty of doing this in WebShed is that you could do it out in the field, provided you've got an internet connection, you could do it from home, you could do it across the world. Um, so we are still developing um, config ma configuration manager uh, in WebShed, but uh, moving forward, it's likely that all the functionality of Config Manager will move into this web uh, environment rather than using Config Manager as a third party or, or a separate uh, program. And essentially that is the webinar on Config Manager. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put me an email or um, yeah, get in contact. Uh, there's my email there, so amini at maxgeo.com.